six years uh, since you signed for, for Celtic, Eric. It's, we're talking just beforehand there. It's scary how time flies by. Um, I think we, the best thing to do is to take it back to, to the very beginning um, when you signed for the club. So when did you first hear of, of, of Celtic's interest and, and did you know much about them? Um, we need to go back to 2015, um, just prior to the, to the winter transfer window where um, I clearly remember I was sitting on the, on the, on the, on the bike up in the gym. Um, normally now it would be a fine using your phone whilst you're in the gym. But at that point, um, I knew that someone, something was cooking. So I had my phone on me and I said, saw that my agent texted me and said that, uh, please call me. It's urgent. Okay. So I, I left the bike uh, and, and went outside and, and phoned him. And he said that, uh, listen, Celtic uh, has shown interest and they're ready to to pay what, what your buyout clause is. Uh, and I had a buyout clause, which helped it really, really well, because then it was just a matter of Celtic matching that number, which was around two million uh, pounds. So when I first then heard about Celtic, I thought that's that's the step that I need. That's that's the perfect uh, club. Uh, and I wasn't really in doubt, to be fair, it was it was quite early in the wind. So I thought that that was uh, meant to be. Uh, and, and then uh, from there, it was quite fast that we uh, arranged the trip to, to Glasgow and uh, I had to go through a, a medical check already. So actually, Mitchell and didn't even know that, that I, was, I was actually in Glasgow because I had my cl- claws. So that had, had just to be... Be, be, be done and, and I could then sign for, for them um, because though the clubs would be agreed then it's just my own personal terms um, and I clearly remember me walking around there with my suede loafers and my uh, down jacket and already there the, the Scottish son or something had taken pictures of me and my wife Anna and I immediately understood the size of the club that okay I'm coming from, from little Denmark here from Michelin and I'm already uh, online and they are saying the great Dane is ca- coming in some way. So uh, I was quite fun to, to, to um, experience that kind of uh, attention there was around uh, signing new players. And it, it is always like that. Can I, I can see when, whenever they're signed players. Yeah. Um, you obviously managed to squeeze quite a lot. And in your, your two years at the club, you were an invincible treble winner. But it's fair to say that probably didn't start off um, the way you wanted to. I think your debut ended in a 3-1 league defeat, um, so mm-hmm. league defeat to, to Ross County at Hamden. Um, obviously, you had had the kind of angry reaction from the fans and media. You must have been wondering what you walked into. Yeah, the, the first initial was actually when I visited Celtic Park, and, and I clearly remember that I really, really liked Ronnie Dyler, and he was the manager who signed me, and he had done really well, but... It was it was like something was missing at Celtic, uh, even though that I felt that it was a big club, but I knew that fifty thousand or, or more had had actually paid for 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 the season ticket, but only thirty thousand showed up. Uh, so it, it it was at a period where the club was in a rebuild. Um, I came in, and and I remember watching the game. I think it was against St Johnston. At that point, I didn't know who St Johnston was. To be fair. I then found out later, but I, I watched the game at at the at Celtic Park and came down to the dressing room to to meet some of the boys and and I remember uh, was Lee Griffiths and and James Forrest almost fighting each other because one had passed the others the other uh, for the third goal or the fourth goal they could have scored and I thought wow I would be happy in Denmark just with a one nil clean sheet happy go home everything is fine but I knew that. The fans wanted to be entertained. The fans wanted to to have big experience coming on Celtic Park, and that was my first initial thought when I came. Wow, that this is a huge difference to what I'm used to. And then I was actually at at Blyswood Hotel. I was uh, living there for the first month actually when I signed, and and I lived there also when I had my debut against Ross County. And I came home and and. Of course, I was happy because I had my debut. I, I did really well, but on the contrary, it was horrendous. Kicked yeah. out three-one against Ross County. I later found out that normally we should win this game, 
uh, without a problem. Uh, but it also said about there was a lot of uh, job to be done uh, the next six months. Yeah. I mean, despite the difficult start, which we touched on there, you seem to quickly fall in love with the club and the fans kind of fell in love with you as well, I suppose. Um, but your family became really engrossed with Celtic as well. I think I'm right in saying that your sister worked for the Celtic FC Foundation and obviously your partner, yeah. and played for the women's team. Um, so yeah. your family became really involved with the club as well, didn't they? They did, for sure. And uh, we we just felt uh, really, really welcomed. And, uh, and it is, to be fair, to be part of a family. Uh, and I think all the players would, would agree with that. Uh, if there is something, they will they will always help all the the backroom staff. I, I still sometimes uh, text with them, wh- whether it's on LinkedIn or or, or WhatsApp. Uh, it it just sticks with you. So I remember as well that my sister, when she wanted something uh, new to happen in her life, she wanted to move away from Copenhagen and thought, why not go to Glasgow? And she had some really really uh, great time. The ten months she was there and and worked for the Celtic Foundation with with Bertie Old as well and that's oh, where man. I came 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 to to meet one of the one of the legends and and I think it, it just says a lot that about generations that everyone is working together people want to stick around uh, in the club no matter whenever they played actually so I think everyone really really felt and I felt that there was a a genuine uh, connection and, and and that's why I I still talk with you uh, six years after <laughs> because it really means something to me uh, the two years I was there. And, and when I reflect now, I'm I'm 30 years old now. I signed when I was 24. Um, it was two years, but it was two years short in some way. I, I, I would have dreamt that it was much longer, but uh, it's always nice to go back memory lane when, whenever I can. Yeah, I mean, within your first few months at the club, you may or may not remember, but a lot of Celtic fans were kind of dubbing you as a future captain. I think around about that time, there was a bit of speculation surrounding Scott Brown's long-term future at the club. Um, And as I say, the fans kind of identified you as as a future captain. Were you one of the more kind of vocal figures in the dressing room? Um, And did you ever see yourself captaining the club one day? Um, I'm, of course... Um, uh, really familiar with the with the role of being a captain. I'm captain of of Mitchell and now and and proud so. Um, I was captain before as well before prior to leaving Mitchell and or, or vice captain, but wore the with the captain arm and felt like a captain for for a lot of the the time. Uh, because our our main captain uh, was was injured for a long time. So, um, and in 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 the sense of being vocal in the dressing room back then. I wasn't the most vocal, but it was also a new time for me and a time for adaptation. In some way, I need to to find my my standings in a new dressing room in a different culture. Yeah. Uh, and 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 even though I respect Scott Brown a lot, uh, and he taught me a lot, he was also very different to how I would I would do things, and I'm doing it 360 degrees different than he's doing it in some way <laughs> because. I'm a different person, and I I would I would do it differently. So, of course, I I I would like to have had 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 a go for it. But again, uh, you have to be at a club for for a long time to to get your recognition and, and get your responsibility up to that level where you you're a material of a captain. Um, but of course, uh, it was a big dream actually coming true when when John Kennedy gave me yeah. uh, and, and Ronnie Dali gave me a, a game with the captaincy. Uh, but at that point, it wasn't something I was thinking of. It was just a, a natural thing that I was one of the, the experienced one, even though I was 24, I had played a lot of game in Denmark. I had played Europe League and, and knew what it was all about. Yeah. I mean, you played with a, diff- uh, with a few different centre-backs in your time at Celtic Park as well. You know, the likes of Charlie McGrew, Dedrick Boyata, Cole Puri. Jozefanovic as well. Who was your preferred partner? Uh, I think I had my my best uh, partnership with with Joseph Simonovic. We yeah. we partnered up for 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 a couple of of games, maybe 10, 15 games or something like that. And we had a clean sheet row of nine, maybe something like that as well. So I felt we were really found a, a really good partnership. Um, but but again, I remember also Charlie Mulgrew, who who was really really good, and and Dedrick, who later came and took my place, even though he was 
almost a, a ghost under Brendan Rodgers the first initial uh, nine months and, and then later came uh, back. Um, but that's football also. So sometimes one goes out and the other comes in. And and even though it was it was a tough time, then uh, I respect uh, that they're all good players. But I would I would say with Simonovic, I partnered uh, really, really well. But also Kolo, we played some good games. Champions League, we played some games there. Um, and and I see him also doing really well now. But Kolo is one of them players that, that came in being maybe 35, as I remember, or something like that. And was unbelievable, so fast, so quick, so good. And then when he turned thirty six, it was like it just stopped. It just ended. <laughs> so I'm I'm always thinking of him that uh, it it really really stopped quickly. Even though that he was such an amazing figure for for the for the first couple of of months, and then uh, I think he said to himself, "Nah, football is <laughs> enough. I want I want to go coaching now." Yeah, I think he made a mistake against Borussia Mönchengladbach, didn't he? And I don't think that was twice, it. maybe. Actually. Yeah, twice. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. I, I agree with you. I think you know, the best partnership we had with, was with Jozo Simonovic. Um, I'm sure you don't need any reminder of this, but you obviously scored a, a brilliant header against Rangers at Hamden. Um, that must have been some moment for you, a real special feeling. What was it like seeing the Celtic end up? I was it was again magical something that I was um I was told prior to my move that those games those are the games you really want to play and and to score in one of, one of those games was even even bigger uh and I will always be there on the list of of scoring in in an old firm game even though that some fans would say ah oh, that's one of your biggest memories because it was a it was a shambles because we lost and everything um, and after that of course what happened wasn't the best because Ronnie then left and and it was a bit of a an uncertainty period but then the next era came with with Brendan Rodgers and maybe it was meant to happen that we had to have that bit of a knock in some way uh, to realize that something needs to change um, but it was a true true big moment and and the picture me jumping up uh, a bit some some jokes says it's a bit of 70s like in the 70s i was i was doing a celebration like i was in the 70s and it was maybe but anyway it was just pure pure happiness and pure uh, proudness yeah you've got some weight that's for sure <laughs> i still got it i'm jumping as high as i am now <laughs> good glad to hear that um it, like you kind of touched on there sorry you broke up a wee bit there eric but um apologies if you, if you touched on this um Celtic obviously lost the, the semi-final to, to rangers and penalties and it was a rangers side playing the championship what was it what was the dressing room like um afterwards the fans of course were absolutely livid yeah yeah i was just touching a little bit about it that even though that it was a, it was it was a low point um, in in that period because um, it wasn't really really going smooth in in any aspects. A bit of uh, intrigues in the squad around the squad. Did there need to be any changes? And then this game came where I felt like personal success, but on a, on a, on the team level, it was it was really really bad. Um, and of course, in the dressing room, the the, the, the atmosphere atmosphere was was uh, near near zero degrees in some way it felt really cold and um, yeah it was tough and, and afterwards as well uh, Ronnie then uh, res- like resigned and said that okay maybe I'm I'm not the guy to to be here anymore and and uh, it was it was a bit of a, a tough period I remember yeah I was actually just going to ask you about Ronnie resigning like you say he resigned just I think it's three days later um, well mm. he announced he, he would be resigning and he eventually stepped in at the end of the season did that news come as a surprise to the Celtic players or did you kind of expect that to happen uh, obviously it would already been a difficult season both in Europe and domestically uh, of course it was a bit of a shock especially for me I just signed uh, for Celtic and and the manager who signed me is is uh, is leaving, so I initially thought, okay, that's that might be the worst. That's the stories you hear about uh, around different places. Whenever you're signed by a manager and then leaves, it might be the end of of your career. Um, so that was my initial thoughts. But then all the speculation, as always in Celtic with with new managers, then hundreds of name what names was was uh, put in the the puddle and or in the pot and and then. Initially, uh, Brendan Rodgers came out of it, and and uh, actually was was a really really good 
uh, step for me as well uh, at that point. Yeah. Why didn't it quite work under Ronnie? Did, obviously, like you touched on there, he was the one that brought you to the club. Did you enjoy playing under him? Yeah, I did. Um, I think it was just... I just felt the tension from from the fans. It was it was like there was something that wasn't really right. It, it might be the way uh, the the team wasn't playing well or, or 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 well enough in some way. They had to be more dominating the the games, and I think it's just also about fans being being used to to having a more dominant performance. And whenever you don't have that. It might be not good enough in some way, even though that you were still winning the league. We won the league in the in the summer. I can't remember with how many points to was it Aberdeen. Um, but anyway, it, there was a lot of things going around as well um, that that maybe also affected uh, the way the team should have performed. Uh, and that's always a thing. Sometimes you have to change the clientele of a team. And, and I think that was undergoing at that point when I came in. That in the six months, people were were change uh, the club were changing players and wanted to find the right um, men- mentality of of players who wanted to be there for 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 being there, not just for 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 being there and then leaving uh, a, a while after. Yeah, it's funny you say that because when Brendan took over, there wasn't actually that much of a high turnover in players in terms of players coming in I think in summary that maybe signed four players four key players mm. who said in Bailey Scott Sinclair and then players which Ronnie had signed uh, in January you know likes of Stuart Armstrong for example yeah. really came yeah. to the floor um, what, it, it seems that things just seem to change overnight obviously apart from that Lincoln Redham so, so uh, we'll forget yeah, that yeah, yeah. but um, what but, do you well, anyway I think yeah, it started actually with that result uh, I think we were first and foremost we were on a on a training camp um, in Slovakia or something like that, I think I can't remember, but it was one of them, uh, Eastern European countries, and uh, we had a session where we also talked about values and 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 it was it was something new, and and you could immediately sense that this manager came from Premier League. Mm-hmm. He he wasn't he wasn't some kind of of random person who's coming in he came in with with a with an aura around him that that said listen if you follow me we'll do great um and and that what's happened as well when we lost in, in, in lincoln said a lot about the next coming period that that we lost a game like that and he said don't worry take it easy they might not be good enough now but wait until the next coming period we'll win the game so he actually took control of the fans in some way he he talked to the fans and they respected the way he he handled the situation and and protected the players in some way and protect the club and then in that sense he came and got respect from the fans and i think that was the most important for a manager at that point that he could actually i don't know the, the english words but control is not not is not the word but you know when you're on a horse and you have to ride the horse and you have Influence, possibly influence. Yeah, in, in, you had to influence, and you had to be strong enough in in your opinion, in the way you 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 dealt with with the surroundings. And I think Brendan Rodgers did that, and that what helped him in the beginning of, of of his Celtic career when it really kicked on for for the next three years or four years. Yeah, I mean, obviously we discussed the the semi final defeat to Rangers, and um, the players more than made up for that. I think it's fair to say with the the five one win at Celtic Park, which obviously you were involved in from the very start. Mm-hmm. You may remember uh, Scott Brown described it as as men against boys. Did it did it feel like yeah. that? Yeah, it did. I remember also that prior to the game that when Roger said, "Listen, we're going to show them mm-hmm. there's a difference in in uh, promoting from the championship." And then playing against Celtic at Celtic Park, and and I just felt that everyone really bought into to that um, analogy, and and really wanted to just actually kick their asses in some way. So it really felt good uh, winning that that game and 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 setting things straight. Um, but also, I remember that Brendan Rodgers at a meeting when he came in that he had been on the game. I've said it before, maybe somewhere, but he had been at the game at Hampden Park where we lost to Rangers and said that we already lost the game prior to the to the actually 90 minutes starting because when he saw us walking into the to the pitch you know when you walk around you watch the pitch 
people were dif differently dressed. People had a hoodie, people had shorts, pants. It was a mess, you know. Mm -hmm. We didn't look like a unit in some way that was about to go into one of the biggest games in the world and win the game. And he said that, and after the, after that, when he came in, we all got tailored suits and we wore the same clothes. And and it's actually something that I've always taken with me as as a as a lesson that me as a captain now, I want us to look the same because it signals unity and it signals that we are ready to go one way for each other. So it's actually, it's not a little thing. It's actually something that you identify yourself with prior to a game in some way. And that's why I'm, I'm, I'm now saying it to all my teammates, we're wearing this, this and that. I want this. So everyone is, is a unit and, and that's a key thing back then as well. Yeah, that's interesting. Can you tell us a bit more about what Brendan said to you or said to the, the, the team, his team talk before the 5-1 game against Rangers? No, of course, I cannot remember everything he said, but I, I remember him saying around setting things straight that we, we need to, to, to show them that there is a difference in level of promoting from the championship and, and, and playing against Celtic, especially at Celtic Park. And he wants... He wanted football where we were aggressive, we were dominating, yeah. we were passing with the ball and we were counter pressing. And so all these things went up in a, in a, in, in a higher grade in some way. And then we really won the game and, and it, felt, it felt great. Yeah. There was also a lot of media hype surrounding you. Remember this well, probably Scott Brown and Joey Barton. Mm -hmm. um, Barton had claimed that, that, that Brown was nowhere near the level of player that he was. Um, did that add a wee bit of fire again into the game? Did, did Scott Brown ever, ever discuss that with the players? I can't remember him discussing it, but I just clearly remember the, the fight in the fight in some way, those two. And then they had and Rogers and his, his staff had made a video for us players. And I don't know if it was published uh, for, for the fans, but it was an amazing video surrounding that that game, 5-1 game. And there was... One thing when the, there was a penalty, not not a penalty, but um, a referee call where he he puts the ball and throws it up in the air. 50, 50, and yeah. those 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 two uh, boys or men just kicking each other and just they didn't hit the ball; they hit each other's knees in, in, instead. And it just said a little bit about the situation. But yeah, Brown was of course dominating Joey Barton uh, by miles that game, and and he showed. That in the in the season to to come as well. Was there a bit of banter with the Celtic players and and, and Joey Barton? I think I remember Mikael Lustig celebrating with a, a beach ball in his, his head running past the uh, running past Barton. Yeah, yeah, but but those two guys, especially Mikael Lustig and, and Scott Brown, they 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 had a thing going for for teasing and and I think it's called shithouser, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I uh, I saw also an article about a game Rangers Aberdeen where. Scott Brown had been on his A game in some way regarding to the shithousery. So they enjoyed that for sure. Yeah. Um, on to the Champions League nights and you started the 3-3 the game against Manchester City. Um, that Champions League night, I recall, was probably the loudest I've ever heard Celtic Park. The noise was unbelievable. What was it like playing in that kind of cold and that, that, that atmosphere? Could you even hear your teammates? I was, it was ridiculously. Uh, it was one of my my biggest experience so far in, in my coming up 300 games. Uh, so it was, it was magical. Uh, the first Champions League for three seasons or something like that at Celtic Park. And I think we had we had played our first game at Camp Now where we were thrashed 7-0. Uh, mm -hmm. And then we played Aberdeen, I think, maybe in 1-4-1. And then came to this game where, where there, of course, there were a lot of expectations to, to Celtic and from the supporters of full stadium, full paradise, going crazy with the with, with the Champions League uh, song uh, coming on, and and it was really really amazing and and loud and and how the game was also uh, developing with one nil, one one two, one two two, and three two and three three. Uh, Musa Dimbalis almost scissor kick, Kieran Tierney, uh, the young talent coming up uh, scored. <laughs> Some would say it was a no goal, but anyway, it was him. Uh, and some some amazing memories from that game for sure. 
Yeah, he's more as a moving on um, towards the end of the season. He's more as a late sub in, in that invincible treble winning uh, game at, against Aberdeen at, at Hamden. There must have yep. been a huge relief not only for you but for the squad when Tom Rodgers scored that magical winner in the dying minutes just knowing that the team had created history what was it like? Ah, it was, yeah it was crazy because I remember we had some some targets put on uh, the the whiteboard with Brendan Rodgers and we wanted to score X amount of goals I think it was 100 plus or something like that and points and everything and, and we can just see it was ticking 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 and then invincible treble uh, oh, sorry, invincible at that point, uh, and um, of course it was something in the back of our heads that we just wanted it to to end now, so we could could uh, have a really really good time and, and enjoy that. And and I was really really happy actually to coming on, even though that my season had changed the round uh, 180 degrees from from being a regular starter to suddenly not playing that much. But anyway, I felt that it was a good way to to even had been playing so many games and then still coming on just to to get the last uh, couple of minutes. Yeah. And you touched on the, the seven points, which I've heard before, which Brendan um, uh, made a uh, kind of list at the start of the season. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you remember them? I mean, it was the Invincible Treble one of the points? It wasn't one of the points from the start, but he said that, listen, if it happens, it happens. Wow. And as as the season was was going, we were go, getting closer and closer to to something that the media were talking about. We weren't talking like with within turn the group that it might happen. But of course, when I was at Eusebi with with Stuart Armstrong and and Gary McKay, Stephen and Ryan and so on, it of course it was something we were talking about. And and when it then happened, then it was something. That of course was was there to to fulfill. Yeah, must you must have been a real pinch yourself moment to to realize what you you've done. It's probably maybe something you look back on once your career's over, and just you know probably look back in disbelief. I think, as I said to a, to a media before that, I think I want to go back to Glasgow and and talk with some of the the fans actually to to hear their um, opinions about that because it it really means a lot to the fans and something that they were talking about and it's something that is so big in Glasgow, in Scotland. And, and of course, in Denmark, I'm, I'm experiencing all sort of different things. We're, we're playing Champions League. We're trying to win the double here and everything. That's the big, big thing here. So football is such an odd thing that it just moves on in some way. People forget, but not in Celtic and not in Glasgow. So that's why I need to go there and, and get some of the, the magic stories. Yeah, I'm sure you'll be invited sooner or later. The celebrations were wild at Hamden that day. I remember it was absolutely soaking wet as well. I assume the, the squad party then the, the early hours of the morning. Any funny is there any funny stories you can recall? Ah, it's been a while. Uh I can't even remember if we went on a trip somewhere. I, I recall we went actually to London, something like that, just to celebrate. We had some days off. So as I recall, we actually went on a on a really, really nice um, trip with the boys, which was well-deserved. Um, yeah, you were obviously a regular during Brendan Rodgers' uh, debut season, um, especially during that first six months. But as you kind of touched upon, um, I think Dedrick Briata came into the to the fold um, and you were kind of in and out of the score. I think that's fair to say towards towards the kind of end of that season. Um, yeah. You, you then played in a couple of Champions League qualifiers and I think it was against Rosenberg you suffered a, a knee injury. Um, mm -hmm. which was really unfortunate. Did you realise at that time that would prove to be your final game for the club? Uh, no, mm -hmm. not at all. Uh, it was, of course, a, 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 an annoying period. Um, after it was January 17, I had just played like one full season, played every single game almost first six months under Ronnie and then six months after under Brendan. Um, and then actually Le Leicester City were, were were ready to to pay big money. I think they had an offer rejected of around 10, 11 million pounds for, from Celtic. Um, and I was really in doubt as well if I wanted to go. So I said to Celtic, listen, I might I might stay if if it's okay. Uh, and 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 the in the end Celtic said, "Listen, you are a key player, and you we need you to stay." But they wanted around thirteen million pounds or something, like that. and 
at that point, Leicester had 15 million pounds to pay two centre backs in some way. Yeah. Uh, so initially they could pay maybe seven or eight on one and then loan the other. But Celtic weren't agreeing on those terms, which I respected and I thought, okay, I'll just be even better for the next uh, season or two. And then I, we'll see what happens. And then I might have my my move one day because that's that's normal in football. Um, but then came back and we were in a training camp and and suddenly uh, when we came back, I had a suspension in the first League Cup where Dedrick and Giozo, Giozo played. Uh, they played a, a small-sided team somewhere. Um, I can't even remember. But they won and Dedrick did well. And then in, in the prior, ne- next game coming up, I thought I would be back in the team because I knew I had been playing all the games and and, and had a big start at his uh, starting eleven in some way. I was on the bench and third game coming up, I was on the bench again. But Jozo had suffered a, an injury the day before the game and, and one and a half hour before uh, the game uh, against Hamilton or something like that. He said to me, Eric, you're starting. And I thought, OK, I'll take my chance. And I, I had Man of the Match awarded that game. And he came in to me afterwards in the gym. I, I remember, listen, that's the way I want you to play. Be more uh, be, be more uh, aggressive with the ball. Try to penetrate the ball. I knew the, those were the things I had to improve. But anyway, I just need to know the things I could have, have improved upon. And then I would have kicked on in some way. And... And I was lacking a bit of of a lead in some way, leash in some way. So three or four games, and I was out again. And that was I was a regular like rotation player from from playing against Messi to to this. It was a bit of a contrast in some way within a year or within a six seven months in some way. Uh, and then we came to the summer, and I hadn't played that much. But I thought, listen. I'll come back after the break. And Boyata had an injury, suffered an injury, which was, which was awful for him. But again, it was my chance to, to play. Um, and it started really well. He, he trusted me and wanted me to play the second leg in, in Rosenberg after Christopher Ayer had had his first game against Rosenborg at home, play, played 0-0. He did really well. But anyway, he came to me, he wanted experience. He wanted a guy who, who knew what it was all about and, and, I, and was out for three months whilst Dedrick was maybe three or four weeks ahead of me in, in, in the rehabilitation. He came back, entered the, the team again and I came back and now came back maybe in October month or September month, had a bit of a re-injury and needed three weeks more. And then October, November and December, there was a bunch of games where I really, really hoped that I could get just one minute just to show the Celtic fans show myself, show everyone that I was actually ready. Uh, but that's that's the the worst part of it that I never actually had a game after my injury at Rosenborg, and, and that annoys me. Even though it's been so many years now, and and I'm at a different place, I'm I'm playing the best football ever, and and I've I face Celtic, and 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 we actually kicked them out of of, uh, of the Champions League uh, qualification as well. So it. It's the thing that annoys me about my my Celtic career that that particular moment that he never gave me the chance, uh, even though he said he wanted. Yeah, I can tell it's a sore one for you, and I totally understand why. Did Did you ever speak to Brendan about it afterwards, even when you left Celtic? Nah, never actually. So uh, one day we'll sit down and and he'll tell me uh, why I didn't play anymore because uh, I I knew and I know I had the level. I'm, I'm showing it today. Uh, so. Yeah, it, it's football sometimes and, and, and what can you do about it? Yeah. So how would you look back in your two years at Celtic then, Eric? You're also part of a special team and, you know, one of the most famous teams in the club's history who enjoyed unprecedented success. But on a personal level, is there anything that you would have done differently? Any kind of regrets? <clears throat> I don't work so much with with regrets, but... Are, are there things that I would have played differently in some way sometimes just to see what would have happened? Uh, because I'm at a point now where I'm I'm so happy what I've uh, ex- achieved uh, in, in Denmark and Michelin, but I also know that it's, it's really difficult to go abroad and I've committed myself also um, to Michelin in some way to, to, to become the best captain uh, in my mind that I've ever been in Michelin. That's my dream. Uh, that's why I'm going all in. But... 
let's say when I went on loan that I came back to Celtic uh, for the preseason and and then three months left uh, after that uh, Brendan Rodgers left what would have happened then you know what I mean would I have had been played at Celtic now or would I have been playing somewhere else but and again what I've been through now in Midtjylland the way the I play now the way I've ex- developed maybe I wouldn't have gone through that if I didn't stay in some way so there's always different things that could have played out different in some way and that's just for the imagination but anyway it's always a bit funny to think about how a decision can affect something it might go to the to the worst side of it but luckily this decision I made not returning to Celtic have have ended out really really well for me but anyway it also ended my career for good in Celtic because I didn't go back even if I had I only had a loan at that point. Yeah. Um I mean just looking back at the time of Celtic as well, who would you say was the best player that you played alongside at the club? Um I, ha- I had really, really good players. I think um and that's not because he's my friend, but I just remember Stuart Armstrong yeah. when he came uh like not when he came, but when Brendan Rogers came, I was really good mates with with Stuart, and and we were talking, and he was not in even in the squad. We were traveling on the hotel, all the things packed, and he we were going to the to the to the stadium, and he was not a part of the squad, and and you couldn't even imagine that whenever you think on Stuart. Yeah. Armstrong now, but the first initial month when it, when he came in and scored was it five one or four one? That's where it kicked on for him, and then he he became one of the best players I've ever played with. And I can I can keep out Tom Rogic as well, who's who's luckily thriving again uh, uh, after a, a tough period with injuries. He's doing amazing. He he is true wizard. The things he can do with a he has a size forty seven or something like that. Huge feet. But technical, his shot, his accuracy, his passing, his split vision is next level. Patrick Roberts, the same with him. The way he had his two seasons, the first season was unbelievable. Um, Scott Brown, the way he came from being almost uh, not able to walk on the on the running. and then becoming a player of the year uh, I don't hope I forget anything but as well uh, wow what a team yeah um, so you're breaking up a wee bit there uh, just coming towards the end of the interview now Eric um, obviously Mikey Johnson's a player that you may remember I think he made his breakthrough when you were at the club mm-hmm. I'm under fire from Celtic fans this season he's 22 now but he's had a, he's had a lot of injury problems do you think uh, that, I don't know if you, how much you've been watching a Celtic but do you think he's a player that will, that will ever fulfil his potential at Celtic Park I remember him clearly. I I also saw his stats actually. Uh, I think he has was it eighteen games and six goals or something like that. When I saw that, I thought that's actually really really good. Mm-hmm. And I know that that the club is is really really um, pushing for him to to succeed. They believe in him, and 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 I know and I know that from from the club. Uh, so so I think he just needs to kick on. He he needs to sort his. Uh, his body, so so they will be in, in in shape, and him he will avoid the the small injuries. But he had some X factor as well. He had a bit of a Patrick Roberts in some way, if you say though that he can he can he can go for an opponent and go through him, uh, go past him and and score or, or or assist. So I think the initial squad that they have is 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 good uh, with with good players. Yota is is really good. Kyogo is doing well. Um, so, so in 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 all fairness, I think they have a really really good team, and and it's only four points there behind uh, Rangers, which was larger at, at one point. I, I remember the gap, and they have closed the gap now. So, it also says a little bit about football when you when you create a, a run of of wins, then you're you're getting the 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 confidence again. Yeah, I mean, after leaving Celtic, Eric, um, it wasn't long before you were actually back in Glasgow yourself with F- FC Mitchell to play against Rangers. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember that you had a bit of a, a run-in, shall we say, with, with Stephen Gerrard. Is that is that fair? Yeah. Is it? I think yeah. Just, is it true that he made that kind of a, a zip at gesture towards you? Yeah, yeah. What, what exactly I was, happened? I was, that was so shocked because 
I think he knew that uh, I had played for Celtic. So, of course, playing against Rangers, I would be asked about question about my my past because it, it wasn't long. It was maybe a year since I left. So the journalist, which I all knew, actually, I could remember the faces and the names. I, I said, listen, I always believe that Celtic is bigger and better and all these things. Of course, I would say that. And then... Uh, we were we were killed by Rangers. They were much better than us at that point. I, I would really, really like to play against them now because I think it would be a different game. But anyway, after the game, we went out and and I wanted to just say thank you for the game and 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 he, and he said something about not so quiet now, eh? And then he made the zip gesture, and I thought, wow, that's uh, that's that's unbelievable from 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 such a legend. Uh, to to no one like me uh but anyway it was it was it was i think he was just annoyed by by my comments even though they were they were pretty uh harmless yeah um and then obviously you're you're back in um in glasgow again earlier this season uh, as you touched mm-hmm. on earlier and this time to face celtic considering your connection with the club and it's a strong affiliation you've got with the club as as we've, as it's clear from your your, your our chat today it must have been strange playing against them I was, it was emotional in some way. Um, I was nervous, but in a good way. Uh, especially because it was something that had always annoyed me as we touched about that my last game for Celtic was 25 minutes I had against uh, Rosenborg. And and since then, of course, fans had been maybe watching me, but, but not Celtic Park. They hadn't seen me play. Uh, and I knew that I was I was the player that I was, uh, and how good I was, and how good I had developed the the last couple of years. So, as a captain, uh, take my team Mitchell in and and play such a good game against a strong Celtic team at that point, but also performing really well and having the man of the match in some way in in, in the Danish media in that game just made my day in some way that I could show all the fans what they in some way had. Had lost in some way, um, and that was a, that was an amazing moment. And even more amazing was when we when we scored in the in the extra time uh, and and uh, and beat Celtic over two legs. Uh, so yeah, it was it was it was really really something that I was happy, even though the fans of Celtic wasn't happy that we kicked them out. But anyway, it yeah. was it was a good moment for me and an important mo- moment. To- yeah. To listen, to like close the 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 chapter of of my my time there. Yeah, I can totally understand why you you'd be delighted. You know, you're going back. You've proved you've proven a point as well. Like you say, this is this is the type of player I am. You've obviously improved as a player since you, you've left Celtic as well. So, um, I can imagine that it must have been a, a great moment for you. Um, yeah, indeed. And obviously, Mitchell probably caught Celtic at the ideal time as well. It was, it was yeah, the early yeah. days of Ange Postley Coglu's reign. Um, were you surprised at how poor Celtic were? There was also a high turnover in, 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 the, in the playing squads uh, since then. Um, but, you know, I think Dean Murray was playing at centre-back, for example, a young boy that was plucked from nowhere. Mm, yeah, Dean Murray and uh, Stephen Welsh was playing there. Um, now, of course, I was. I, I knew that they were good. And, and, and I think they just started with, with this... Really, possession oriented football with, with um, uh, what's his name, Kenny, not Kenny, um, left back. Why can't I cannot remember his name now? Greg Taylor. Sorry. Greg Taylor, sorry, Greg Taylor moving in uh, as an almost a kind of a midfielder. There, it was a lot of going on, and and we had looked upon that and and knew that they were really really good offensively, but but defensively not that strong and and we exploited that to be fair um and we needed to de- deal with Otton Otson Edward who wasn't maybe in his prime at that point mentally maybe somewhere else uh, <laughs> and 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 we 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 yeah pretty much locked him down both games um but of course it, it was the right moment to to face Celtic because we were also actually in a, in a rebuild with a new manager so it was a, a game of of two teams in a rebuild, it was just about who was uh, faster uh, in in the rebuild. Yeah, now this is something I must ask you, Eric. Because a lot of fans uh, we want an answer to it as well. There was speculation linked with linking you if I moved back to to Celtic at the start of the season. Was there any truth in that? 
Uh, there was actually a little bit of truth in it. Um, we had a, some some initial talks with um, with Celtic, um, but but quickly I think uh, the manager, uh, the new manager, maybe saw that he wanted some some players that he had had to choose in some way. But as I understood that uh, I was highly rated and, and something that could have been considered. But anyway, they they took a, a different uh, centre back. Uh, but it was anyway. It was nice to be linked and and. It did blow up in the internet, which was uh, fun to <laughs> to be a part of. Yeah. So, did you hold any talks with Celtic, or was it just between the clubs? It was just between my agent and and, and the club. So, uh, of course, I I know everything is what is going around, but uh, yeah, it was it was a um, it was a hectic uh, speculation time. Yeah. Is it something that you would be in, you would have been interested in or ever interested in returning for Celtic? Yeah, hundred percent. Um, at the moment, I'm 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 at this at a stage of my career there where I'm at my best age, best football, and and I'm giving that to Michelin at the moment. Um, and I know how much they they value me here, uh, and wouldn't let me go <laughs> uh, unless someone paid uh, a lot a lot of million. Um, <laughs> but who knows? Maybe one day, if I'm good enough, uh, it might might happen. If not, then uh, it won't. But as I always said. There's two clubs. It's Michelin and it's Celtic, um, and 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 that that's my clubs.